First, dev blog. What is this? There's a short one and then there's a long one. We'll cover the short one first. And the short one is just a short, what is it? Close test, changes to test chips. Based on testing results, we're applying changes to Commonwealth Cruisers, Red Fort, Hobart, Auckland, Encounter Servers. Okay, Auckland, Encounter Servers. Reduce the splash area of the dev charges, the radius in which flooding and fires may occur to be equal to the damage area. Other cruisers in the Commonwealth Cruiser line will receive this change at a later date. It's interesting that uh, they're they're very 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 picky about uh, the splash damage and stuff because this this is the new this is the new Commonwealth line that has the um, this is the Commonwealth line that has the uh, sub surveillance. So they're basically designed to hunt subs, uh, and now they're apparently nerfing the splash area on it so they're less effective at hunting subs, which is like it, it, it kind of rings weird. Mm. It kind of rings weird, especially since... Uh, shit, can I find... Mm -hmm. and the, the kind of rings weird because, well, the, the, if you guys didn't know, there's already a difference in how splash damage works in World of Warships. Not all death charges are, are identical. In fact, there's a lot of hidden parameters to death charges, namely between every other surface ship in the game and CVs. CVs have different um, damage modifiers on different areas of the splash. I, I tweeted about it, let's see, when was it? 20 last year, no, two years ago almost. Well, one and a half years ago, September 2022, I tweeted about this. Uh, it was based on Razor's testing. Basically, uh, the standard, the standard we can show it here. The, the standard deviation of a dev charge for every surface ship is 150 meters, 4.9k, basically the max damage, point blank. And then you got 2450 on the 300 meter radius, and then 375, zero damage. This is like where you do the fires and floods without dealing damage. This is it. But CVs, on the other hand, well, their 4900 damage is twice as large, and their damage fall off, as you can see, their damage fall off. Instead of 2450, uh, their damage fall off is 3185, and it's also significantly larger in size. Like, 300 meters here is the same as your entire damage area. They do max damage within this entire area. So, CVs have vastly different, uh, vastly different hidden ASW parameters. Their ASW just does a lot more damage, and it has significantly larger splash at 600 versus uh, 375. So much much stronger so and of course cvasw is automated and it automatically automatically predicts where you are based on pings and stuff and it, it drops for you so not only is it much much stronger uh it's automatic so my my issue here is that they're perfectly fine with uh tv is having this enhanced splash and stuff but then for a ship class that is supposed to hunt subs a surface ship now, this one gets a nerfed version of the surface ships. It's, uh, I mean, Wargaming have just painted themselves into a corner. It, this is kind of like the CV rework, the sub rework, or the, the submarines are kind of like their CV rework, because they don't know where to go with balancing this. They, they, they're, they're in a situation where either the class is horrendous to play, or the class is horrendous to play against, and it's almost impossible for them to find a balance there. Nice, man. It's mute. I had a, I had a sneeze coming for ages, and it just wouldn't come. So I, I had to wait for the, I had to wait for the, wait for it to charge up. The bot drops up for them. Yeah, no. The CV's bot ASW is the best ASW. Anyway, now for the actual big one, the juicy one, the juicy one. Uh, public test thirteen point one. Balance changes. Wargaming daring to touch the balance of their game. Let's see. Let us see. Let us see. The big one. Yeah, I had yesterday 19 splash damage with Holland on the sub, taking three quarters of itself. Yeah, I mean, it's... It is what it is. I, I've had those situations where I land a shit ton as well, and the sub just survives. It's 
but then you then you watch that's why the ccvs get so many of those full damage direct hit nukes is because the splash damage area on their direct hit is the same as your entire splash damage area like they're they're, they're, they're just different but it doesn't really say that anywhere because it's kind of hidden parameters They've gone too far, they can't go back. Wasted two years making Underwater World that no one cares about. Yeah, I mean, in fact, most people dislike the Underwater World because it caused so many issues with terrain glitches. Like, ships would get stuck and, and like, there, there were so many issues. And, like, the mappers were in Underwater Prison for two years making that ship. It's... They, they've gone, they, they're like... They, they're, they're full on uh, sunk, and co sunk cost fallacy at this point. We're applying balance changes to many ships based on an analysis of both their combat statistics as well as extensive player feedback. I kind of believe it, but I kind of don't. Because uh, more, more the fact we're applying balance changes to many ships based on dropping player numbers. And we can no longer ignore it. I think that's more accurate because uh, the idea that I'm already looking at the ships Ruyo and Hayate, the idea that they needed like four or five years of data and feedback to figure out that something needs to be done is completely absurd to me they, they've known this for years they just haven't cared so yeah ruyo nerf thank god and not not nearly enough it's still obnoxious as hell to eat full citadel damage torpedoes with no way with no aa at the tier but hey it's right in a step uh, it's a step in the right direction i have that torpedo reload okay so they copied rushes this Russia CIS did the same thing. Lesta, Lesta did this exact same thing where they put the torpedo reload booster as a separate consumable. And I praised them for it because Hayate is a pile of shit. Um, and it might actually be worth using now. It might actually be a semi semi decent ship now. So absolutely a step in the right direction. Because Hayate is kind of like the stepchild. It's the size and clunkiness of the uh, Haruguma with the firepower of the Shima. Oh, and the guns of the Shima, which is like, it, it just, it, it was just a weird, weird ship. Uh, but now it will actually be able to do, maybe play as a high, some sort of hybrid between them where it can fulfill both roles. It seems, seems much more interesting. So I'm glad they copied it. It's a big buff, yeah. T6 AP bombers, yeah. I mean, it's just, the, the, the tier 6 CVs in general, there's so many broken. There's the Levenhardt, there's the Burn. There's, they're, they're just hilariously overpowered. The fact that they're willing to touch them is surprising to me. Like it, the, the idea that they would need this many years of, of feedback and analysis to figure out how broken these are. Come on. Secure you. Tactical torpedo bombers damage reduced. Oh shit, that's actually a significant nerf. And they nerfed the tactical. Wow. Turns out having expendable, consumable based squadrons that do massive damage is actually not a very good design. Who knew? Who knew? I, I'm actually in awe. They nerfed a super ship CV. I didn't know they could do this. I, I didn't know they could do it. Are they nerfing other super ships? Now I'm, now I'm interested in this devlog. Are they actually willing to touch the most broken super ships? Oh man. Okay, let's see. Clemson. Stock torpedo reload time increased. Researchable reload time increased. Okay, well this is just a sign that Wargaming doesn't understand what makes Clemson overpowered. They, this is just, they don't know what they're doing here. Uh, like Cl Clemson is called Clubson because it's a seal clubbing ship. And the reason Clemson is such a hilariously strong seal clubber is because it's incredibly stealthy and it has a shit ton of firepower for the tier. Uh, the torpedoes are completely irrelevant. S like giving four second reload on the torpedoes isn't going to change shit on, on the Clemson. The issue with the, with the Clemson is that it does, well, more damage than a lot of things at that tier. That, that's the problem. Like, Clemson does more damage than some of the cruisers and the vast majority of the DDs, except that I think there's one DD that does more, and that's the Easy Oslov. But that thing is just clunky and horrendous. They, sh they should have been nerfing the guns, uh, not the torps. Torps were not the issue. Aren't Clemson torps like super short range as well? Do I misremember? Where's Clemson? Let me see. Uh... This is, I think, they looked at the stats and saw Clemson is overperforming, so they had to nerf something, so they nerfed the Torps, but... Let's see, Torpedo... Yeah, Torpedo range 5.5 can. It's mostly used for YOLOs. Um, so this doesn't really change anything. You still use it for YOLOs the exact same way. It's, uh... 
Yeah, no. This this is them looking at a spreadsheet. Clemson win rate too high. Let's nerf torpedoes. California. Main but your reload time reduced. Wait, are they California was of course a tragedy of a ship. California came out and then like within a week or two they announced Florida, which power crept the shit out of California in every possible way. Main battery reload time reduced. 34 to 32.5 changed engine parameters the acceleration time for forward and reverse movement was significantly reduced and now matches vermont this is not going to be enough the issue with california is the guns are trash and it's still slow as hell this doesn't actually change anything this is again uh this ship needs a buff but we don't know what we're buffing so we just randomly buff something no it, that ship has that ship's biggest issue is that it's the slowest ship at tier 7 I think. I don't think there's a ship that's actually slower. California base speed is 20.5 knots. I don't think there's a ship that's actually slower. Like even Colorado is faster than California. It's it's trash slow. When you remember Synop does 27 and Heinrich does 28. Like it's like this thing does 20.5 and I think the guns were pretty shit on it as well. Weren't they? They were yeah, 356s, so you don't even overmatch other BBs. You're slow, you don't overmatch other BBs, they overmatch you on the other hand. And did it have anything? It, it was such a tragedy of a ship. Its biggest selling point was... I mean, the AP DPM isn't even that good. It's not like... Uh, the HE DPM not even... No, like, there's there's nothing really there. 1.9 Sigma, is that, that that's the selling point? Like... Oh, and the California turret traverse. I forgot this. California turret traverse is 60 seconds. The California turret traverse is 60 seconds. Why in God's name would you play this thing? This is nowhere near enough. This is... They could probably put this reload at 28 seconds and it still wouldn't be decent. Like, this, it, this is still not decent. This is not even close to decent. What's the, having good acceleration is great, but then when you realize that you accelerate to your max speed of 20.5 and then the acceleration stops, it's kind of depressing. They were New Mexico guns with shit shells. Yeah, and it, it's pins everywhere. I think, I mean, if you think I have that thing, I think I have that thing, and, and like, it, it is a, an absolute tragedy. I appreciate them trying to buff it, but nowhere near enough. Yeah, here it is. Here it is. It's thick as hell, and look at the armor. Everything overmatched by same tier BBs that have 380mm guns or larger. Everything overmatched. You just eat damage from everywhere. I think you... Did you even have a Citadel that was... No, I think the Citadel was hard to hit. That was the only saving grace. Yeah, Citadel was hard to hit. That is the only saving grace. You can't be sit, but you're so slow, you eat damage from everywhere. Like, this is with speed play, 21.5. That's with speed play. It just oof. 180 degree turn time, 52.2. That is, I think, running the. Yeah, we're running this thing. That's how bad this ship. We're, we're, we're running. We're running this thing just to get the 52 second turn traverse. It's, bro. It's it's not enough. It's not nowhere near enough. Oh, and they're buffing the Florida at the same time. Florida was the ship that power crept the hell out of uh, California when it came out because Florida has battlecruiser dispersion um, and it's up fast so it's much more fun to play and it's just better so Florida gets an even bigger buff which is interesting because it's already so much better than this thing interesting I mean Florida also has 12 356 millimeter guns but it has battlecruiser dispersion faster turret traverse um, the ship itself, I think, wasn't it a shit ton faster as well? It did... What was the speed on the Florida? Uh, 27 knots base, yeah. It's just... Why would you... Why would you play that thing again? What's the health on that thing? 51.8. California is... Where the hell is California? I lost it. Help. 51.8 and California is... 
58. Yeah, yeah. 7k health difference, but Florida makes up for it with speed easily. Indianapolis pop. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Indianapolis buff. Indianapolis was... It was... I mean, Indianapolis against same tiers is pretty nice. Indianapolis was one of those ships when you played ranked and you kept running into fucking Belfasts and Flints and you were just so tired of it. Then you took out the Indianapolis and you got your 10k radar and started smashing them. It was pretty damn satisfying. Um, get, buffing this thing is fine. It's not like it's going to be suddenly overpowered because of this. It's still terrible firing angles, clunky, it's a Pensacola hull. It blows up pretty easily, but uh, more fun to play, I guess, like this. New York, no point for New Orleans anymore? New Orleans is a much better hull than, than Indianapolis. New Orleans is a much better hull than uh, Indianapolis. I, I don't really agree with that. New Orleans hull is vastly superior, I think. I think the Citadel on this thing was like... That's the Citadel on the New Orleans. They're kind of identical. Kind of identical, actually. Pretty close. Kind of identical. Did they have the same guns? 13 seconds. AP 853. Indianapolis had slow shells, though, didn't it? Oh, no, it's the same. Hmm. That will power creep into New Orleans territory pretty hard. That will power creep into... You're, you're right about that. That will actually power creep into, into Indianapolis territory pretty damn hard. What's, what's your New, New Orleans advantage anymore? If you can run Hydra and Radar, and you got same reload. And Indianapolis had insane range. 16.9. New Orleans as well. 16.2. Hmm. Free flag 4.8. Free flag 4.8. 2 to 8 continues. Free wave. Yeah, it's kind of 34.1 knots. There, I did. Wow. If they don't buff New Orleans, then Indianapolis is just straight up New Orleans but with 10 game radar. Hmm. That's kind of oof. I don't really like when premiums are just objectively better than, than tech trees. And this, this, with, with this change, Indianapolis is objectively better than New Orleans. Hmm. Do they get heavy AP? No, it starts with Baltimore. Interesting. I don't really like that. Hornet buffing the consumables quarter. Ish. Jesus Christ. No one needed that. No one needed that. Jesus Christ. The B-25 squadron is 192k HL for now. Yeah, no, no, something no one asked for. Wargaming is like, hey guys, we know that you, we know that CVs are pretty broken right now and we're considering all these reworks for it, but he here's a CV buff, by the way. What? Nebraska, Delaware, and Louisiana. Change the parameters of the stock and research of the dive bombers. Bombers now equipped with JTO booster. Wait, does this mean they take off? Did they give them knock him out rocket boosters for takeoff? And they increase the pen so it can shit on 50 millimeters, which means a lot of the tanky cruisers. What the? Really? Really? Hey, we know you guys don't really like the state of the planes. Here's some more planes, plane buffs. And Napolis, wait, are they doing something? Interval between individual shots in burst increased 1 to 1.5. That is very small. Surveillance radar consumable action time decreased 40 to 35. They have no, they don't play the game. They actually don't play the game. What the fuck? They actually, they, wow. Never has it been more obvious that they, they don't fucking play the game. Holy shit. They're objectively not playing their own game. They, they really looked at the Annapolis and they were like, yeah, you know what the problem with the Annapolis is? 
The burst fires too quick and the radar is five seconds too long. Not the fact that it has that dumb spaced armor that the Mo that Des Moines doesn't, which means Annapolis gets away with a lot of shit that it absolutely shouldn't. And on top of that, that it has absolutely absurd HE and AP DPM. Hello? Are they demented? I mean, I know they're demented, but like the thing is, when you go from Des Moines, Des Moines has 275,000 HE DPM. 275. When you go from Des Moines to Annapolis, Annapolis has 367. Okay? Like more than a 33% increase in damage going from tier 10 to 11. That's the problem because you're getting a tankier hull that is much harder to citadel and you're getting a 33% increase in DPM at the same time. That is not going from tier 10 to tier 11. That is going from tier 10 to tier 13. That's the kind of DPM jump we're talking about. Uh, the fact that they don't seem to at all understand how much of a leap that is. Like, are they? Uh, how drunk are they? Hello? Like, what the fuck? They really thought this was, like, the problem? They don't play their own game. Like, the issue is, this thing does almost as much HEDPM as a Smolensk, except with better pen and on a heavy cruiser platform. That, that's that's the issue, Ward. It's, it's not a hard problem to solve, Ward. I mean, this thing shouldn't be dealing as much damage as it does. That's the problem. Like, God knows why, also, something that makes absolutely no sense to me. This, this is probably one of the funniest things ever. Uh, well, funny, funny, ha, ha funny, ha, ha, really funny. Uh, they want, the reason why, they, they took the Moin turrets and put that on them. And of course, the Moin turrets has that standard 5.5 second reload. But, and they wanted to put the same on Annapolis. So Annapolis also has that same 5.5 second reload. Oops. Yes, that same... Um, 5.5 second reload. We're running a captain here. Let's send. Uh, send reserve. I think we're running reload mode. We need. To, well, we can. We can take off the reload mode. Sure. Whatever. Uh, so they wanted to have the same guns, like 55 RF MK16. They wanted to copy the guns. So the argument for giving the Annapolis the 5.5 game reload, 5.5 second reload, was if the same guns, they're just on the bigger hull. But for some reason some reason by the way uh the moin turret reverse is 30 seconds the moin on this exact same turret the moin turret reverse is 30 seconds and napoli's turret reverse is 20 seconds huh sorry what where did the 10 seconds go just fucking magically disappeared apparently the reasoning for running having the same reload and the same turrets what was suddenly not that important, it just had to be more super. Like, it's... The whole Annapolis is such a fucking demented joke. Because the re this armor is the biggest joke. This gigantic spaced fucking citadel. Like, the ci you have to punch through 170 and then it arms all shells. So that's the problem. Like, the an Annapolis can sit full broadside to a Des Moines at 10km and the Annapolis will win. Because the DM, even shooting AP, can't sit a little, the Annapolis, and the Annapolis does so much HEDPM shooting back, or just AP can break the turret, that the Annapolis will win. It is an absolutely retard-proof ship against its own line. This, combined with the huge increase in DPM and turretverse, uh, well, turretverse isn't as important on cruiser, but it's still fucking stupid. This is a bigger issue, because Des Moines looks like this. This is Des Moines. This is Des Moines Citadel. Look at the fucking size of this thing. This is what Des Moines, if Des Moines gets caught broadside by anything, it blows the fuck up. If Annapolis gets bro caught broadside, <laughs> empty void magically appears. Explain to me how the fuck this kind of turret design on a fucking citadel like this even makes any sense. Ex what the fuck is this? What, what the fuck is this? The barbette just fucking disappears into thin air? Apparently this is not the ammunition room where they send up the ammo. Apparently it's not important. We're gonna just fucking casually shade the way this part because apparently you didn't need it anymore because it's a super ship. Like this entire design is complete horseshit. It makes no fucking sense. It's obviously made for these drooling imbeciles that want to play a super cruiser and get away with playing like complete retards without ever being punished. That is the whole point of it. And then Wargaming goes, yeah, we should uh, 
we should nerf the radar by five seconds. That that will fix it. Not the fucking pro not the fucking fact that this thing does three hundred and sixty-seven thousand HEDPM. That's not the problem. Wooster, a light HEDPM cruiser, does less HEDPM than the fucking Annapolis. No, that's not the problem. Ha <laughs> ha. We know what we're doing. Trust. Fucking demented. Like this thing does more AP damage than Minotaur. Minotaur only has AP. Minotaur is a light AP DPM cruiser, and it does less AP DPM than the Annapolis. And they don't see the DPM as a problem. They see the fucking radar duration as a problem. They are so bad at this game. They are so bad at this game. They are objectively so fucking bad at this game. What the fuck? Ammunition gets teleported into the turret? Yeah, basically. Richthofen rockets can't sit Annapolis due to that spaced armor? Yeah, I know. Des Moines gets blown up by the rockets instantly. Like, that, that spaced armor makes them immune to almost all AP rockets and almost all small caliber AP as well. Like, in Alabang, if a Des Moines gives broadside, I can smash the fucking De Des Moines. If an Annapolis gives broadside, I can basically never sit him because the, the, that spaced armor arms the fuse and it never reaches the citadel. It, it, it makes them immune to sits. The, and the pro... Like... Just fixing that Citadel wouldn't even be enough because it still does so much fucking damage. Like, the damage leap is so insane. But it has both the hull and the damage at the same time. So it's this horrendously, hilariously overpowered combination. And then Wargaming is like, oh, radar and burst. These are the problem. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, they don't know what they're doing. That's the problem. They do not know what they're doing. They have no fucking idea what they're doing. United States, tactical torpedo bombers. Wow, you actually nerfed this. How long did this take? When did the United States get announced? The player numbers must be looking pretty bad. That, that's my take from this. That the fact that they're willing to even touch upon the ships people have been complaining about since God knows how long. Like, when, when was the first complaints about USSS? The day it came out? Two years ago or something? And now they're finally doing something about it? Jesus. I'm, I'm glad to see it, but why did it take this long? It shouldn't take this long for a fucking intern to go into the files and change a number, change a parameter to a lower number. Thank you, Boxopus, for 24. Mm. Mikoy, main battery accuracy setting change. They will now be similar to other cruisers tier 5. Okay. Were they worse? Wasn't Mikoyan the one with the hilariously troll guns? Was that Mikoya? Was Mikoyan the one with the Donskoy guns at tier 5? There was one Soviet cruiser that was absolutely hilarious because it can citadel other cruisers across the map. I I, I remember I, when, when it came out, I laughed about how funny the guns were, and then people were like, Flam who thinks it's overpowered! And I was like, no, the guns are just really fucking dumb. But the, the hull on it is garbage. It's like, well, tier 5 cruisers. Name a good tier 5 cruiser. Yeah, there isn't one. They all blow up. They're all a fucking joke. But now, now it actually has dispersion and better reload and a bit more AP damage. Could be even funnier now. Molotov is a tier 6. Nice try though, guys. Anyway. Kiev. Stock. Oh, classic Kiev getting buffs. Oh, man. Wait, are they buffing the Soviet destroyers? That would be about time, honestly. Soviet destroyers are really bad. Stock hull increased. Okay. Not that big of a buff. 17.5 at tier, tier, five, uh, tier 8, though, should be pretty good. Like, how much? 17.5. That puts you at... That puts you at, well, still less than the French, and the French have saturation. Yeah, but you have a heal, though, I guess. I don't know. The problem is the Terrible and Fantasque exist, and they both have 8.5 and 8.6 game health, so... Yeah, I don't know. Kaba! Okay, they must really be getting desperate if they're touching upon the Kaba. I, I thought they forgot the ship existed. I didn't know they knew this ship was still a thing. I I'm in awe. Repair party consumable re replaced with specialized repair teams with the following parameters. 225. That's probably not a random number. Uh, Kaba has 22.5k health, doesn't it? 22 point, I think it has 22.5. So that's probably a 1% heal. Let's see, what was the health on Kaba? 
Yeah, 22.5, which is hilariously low in, in current standards. When you consider fucking uh, Regnars and Regolos and Bazan and Elbing and so forth. But 22.5, so that's super. That's 1%. That's 1%. So action time, 20 seconds. Wait, wait, so wait, 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 wait. Where's our hammer? So how much shelf do we have on this thing? 26. So 2.6k so healing. Wait, no. Yeah, wait. Was it 20? It was 260. Wait, 5.2k, right? 5.2. Yeah, 5.2. So you get 5.2 and then you run a healing flag. So you can heal 6.2k per heal. Yeah, let's get tailgate. Shut up. Jesus Christ. Oh, you can... Yeah. I mean, it's an increase. Okay, we need to change ship. This guy is too loud. This guy is too fucking loud, man. Holy shit. That was the flag at Albert. I put 1.2 modifier in there. So 6.2k health. Or 6.2k health per heal. What else? That's it? 6.2k health. But that's that's not enough. Oh, he's gonna. Can I? Um, we're, we're, okay, okay. No, 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 no. Thank you. Okay. That's not anywhere near now. That's not gonna be enough. Like it's still gonna be trash. Like the big main issue really is that the ship has really bad firing angles, and. Uh, if the concealment is still terrible. Concealment and handling is still a joke. That's a problem. The firing angles are terrible. The concealment... I have 9.7 concealment with this build. And that's the only build where you can actually do something. You're completely irrelevant. Like, 9.7... Why haven't they touched on concealment? There's absolutely no, no reason for the Gabba to have concealment as bad as it is right now. There's no reason for it. Also, the rudder shift being 11.1... Bro, there's battleships with better uh, rudder shift than Kaba. There's actually battleships with better rudder shift than Kaba nowadays. It's uh, it's junk. It's it's not enough. Mm. Yeah, no, it's it, that's not enough. It, I mean, it's a heal is great. You're gonna instead of healing what about under three k? You're healing now. Um, you're going to be healing like uh, 6.2k. But the healing 3k more per heal isn't going to suddenly make Kaba playable. Like there's the occasional game that where Kaba can work when a bunch of battleships push into you and you're kited and you get the HE farm. But it's not like it's good in in those situations either. Like what does it have going for? Like I don't think people... Like has Wargaming forgotten... Or does Wargaming not realize how much more damage they've added to the game? Like, Kaba's DPM output is a joke in the current year. So giving it more survivability isn't going to make it more playable. It's it's tragic. Like, okay, how would I best... Okay. Well, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty, pretty good idea. Um, Holland has an HE DPM... How much damage it can put out per minute, HEDPM, of 210,000. That's Holland HEDPM. Using the torpedo boat Holland or hybrid, using its guns, that's 210k HEDPM. Uh, Kamba has 182,000. So Holland has 15% more HEDPM than Kamba. And this is a ship that has 9.7 concealed. Torpedoes that have 6km range, terrible firing angles, and an 11.1 second rudder shift. On, on what planet is this justifiable stats? And then we have ships like, yeah, we, we're not going to talk about Gdansk and the actual gunboats. Like, we're not going to talk about, like, there's, there, there's Sherman, Gdansk, Karaguma, Vampire, Small, and Marceau. Like, f f even Hayate does more HEDPM than Kabadas. Like, this thing has gotten so power crap. Yeah, I mean, it's a step in the right direction, but <laughs> absolute. This is like, this is like trying to plug a sinking ship with, with your thumb. Except there's a torpedo hole. Like, 
<laughs> it's your your entire bow is blown off, and, and you're trying to block it with your hand. This is that. This is nowhere near enough. This is nowhere near enough. Petro, whoa, 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 whoa. Are they? This is the fourth or fifth concealment nerf, to Petro. Fourth or fifth. If only someone would have told them when they first released the Petro that um, the concealment is. What the fuck did I just do? Oh, what did I do? I did something demented. Thirteen point two. So we've gone. Capitra concealment has gone from eleven point four to eleven point seven to twelve point one to twelve point four to is it twelve point four now or is it twelve point seven now? I think it's twelve point four now, and then to thirteen point two. Yeah, that that's the way. It's, and Albert, yeah, that's what I remember as well. That's how it's gone. So this is the fifth concealment nerf to this thing. If only someone would have told them when it first came out that the concealment perhaps, a ship this tanky perhaps doesn't need to be stealth radaring as well. This might finally kill the stealth radar though. At 12.4 you can still easily stealth radar because of the rendering delay. It's very easy to use it. This might finally change that. It, it's not going to change the fact of course that it's still hilariously tanky. Has a completely dumb profile and uh, the AP is ridiculous. It doesn't change any of those. But at least stealth radaring will be less of a threat. It will e it will be easier to keep the ship lit. So that is something. Yeah, I mean the the Pe Petro doesn't re unless Petro is stealth radaring. Petro doesn't really care much about the concealment. Petro just shoots all the time because the odds of actually getting any damage in return is like non-existent. But yeah, no, um, funny, but. I, I, I write it's different. I hate stealth radar. Stealth radar. Stealth radar. The reason I've always hated stealth radar is um, stealth radar doesn't leave a destroyer any chance to counterplay. If you can't see the ship that's going to radar you before he radars you, you don't have any counterplay. It, it's like it's like subs and CVs in this game. The reason I hate them is because there, there's a lack of counterplay. These are these are the reason. The same reason I've always been against stealth radar is there is no real counterplay. That's why I've always been hated ships like the USS Black. For example, because uh, if you try, it's it's too too stealthy. Smoke and radar is one thing, but the problem is it's so stealthy that it can always push up smoke and radar and always get an advantage in engagements. And uh, the whole concept of smoke and radar together is always bad, and stealth radar is always bad because these are situations that leave you very little counterplay, which is a bad design. But I mean, considering their war gaming is adding. As super CVs and subs in the game, this is a small evil compared to those, but at least a step in the right direction. Radar Mino is pretty okay. Radar Mino is pretty okay. It kind of needs the stealth radar to be able to use the, the ship. And in return, that ship blows up super easily. And if you angle against it, it does very little damage. So there, there's, there, is a, there is a fair bit of counterplay there. But that's a high risk. Whereas Petro is the opposite of high risk. It's very easy to push in a radar with zero risk. Sevastopol. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did they finally realize it's a pile of shit? Main battery reload time reduced. That's good. But more importantly is the heal. Change of parameters of the repair part to consumable. Okay. Fast. Less action time. Less cooldown. But one extra charge. That's probably pretty good. That's probably pretty good. You lose a fair bit of healing, though. You lose 33% of healing. You lose 33% of healing, you get 33% more of them. That's not going to even out. But the, cooldown, the shorter cooldown makes it so you can play it much more actively. That's pretty good. I think I... Shit, the problem is I, have, I don't have that on EU. I bought it on Russia and then regretted buying that thing. And this is for the EU. I bought this ship on Russia, and man, I regretted buying it. It's so fucking bad. It has to be one of the worst cruisers. The problem still, they didn't... This, this doesn't resolve the key issue of the Sevastopol. One of the key issues of the Sevastopol. Sevastopol has 60 second fires, but they gave it limited DCPs. They gave it limited DCPs. So you have five DCPs on a cruiser. And that is fucking obnoxious. That is absolutely fucking obnoxious. 
you keep like you can't DCP sing like when when you're going dark, you you don't really want to DCP single fires, or if you do, you're running out of them really quickly, and then you're stuck in that shit situations where where you don't have a DCP on a cruiser. It's like you get farmed so easily by other cruisers or gunboats and things in it because you have so few guns, you do very little DPM. You're more of a like heavy AP smasher, and uh, if you start getting farmed by something, you just you're just so fucked. It makes it better, but I don't think it's enough. Zork you. Wait, was this all the Soviet ships? Number of shoots? Okay, they nerfed Zork. But wait, what about Delmi? If they're touching Kamba, Zork you. What about Delmi? I think they forgot Delmi. I'm thinking they forgot Delmi exists, Jan. That's unfortunate. Delmi is forgotten. What's Delmi? Delny who, yeah. Uh, Delny is a gunboat that has a Soviet gunboat. That has really impressive DPM. Let me uh, show you, actually. Let me show you. Uh, we can, we can organ... Oh, this looks even better. Look, we can organize it like this. Delny is a gunboat. So, you have... If you organize gunboats by DPM, you can see all the real gunboats here. Actual gunboats, actual gunboats. Now we start getting to the hybrids. And the Kaba is, of course, here below the hybrids, because below gearing, daring, and all this, because the Kaba is a pile of shit. Giving this thing heal isn't enough. And then you're like, but where's the Delny? Is he here? Wait, Regola? Yu Yang? But where's the Delny? Z42 Ragnar? Grossman? But where's the Delny? Where's the Soviet gun the Delny? I can't find it. Trump? Summers? Short no. Maybe this list is bugged. Maybe Delny isn't on this list. Z52? Kleber? The real boosting Kleber? Still can't find Delny. Where is Delny? Ah, here we go. On par with our. Beloved Shimakaze in HEDPM, we have the Soviet gunboat Delny. Woo! Really good ship, by the way. Really strong. You really want to build this one for guns and farm that epic HEDPM damage with this thing. So, uh, I guess Wargaming just forgot that ship exists. I mean, I don't blame them. Most of the community has forgotten it exists as well, because it's a complete pile of shit. But I'm kind of impressed that they didn't do anything about it at all, because that HEDPM is a complete joke. It's just an up tier trash can, basically. It's hilariously trash. It's hilariously trash. Colossus. Change the parameters of the attack aircraft. Number of rockets per plane, per plane reduced 6 to 5. The size of aiming ellipse increased by 20. The amount of rockets guaranteed to hit closer to center aiming ellipse. So they nerfed Colossus. Oh, wow. We decided to tone that damage potential. In addition, making harder pin of decrease the number of rockets that guarantee to decline. You know, I don't think they actually did this because this thing was shitting on cruisers. Because, like, if the reasoning, because this thing absolutely dev struck cruisers. But but you know what the Colossus also did? It dev struck carriers. It shat on enemy carriers really hard. Particularly Soviet carriers got fucking annihilated by the Colossus because it could citadel strike them and it would fucking annihilate them. So, I don't think this is for the sake of cruisers, because if they cared about the cruisers, then Malta should get absolutely hammered into the ground. I think the reason why they did this was because Colossus was dumpstering enemy carriers. They were sniping on enemy CVs, and that's why they actually did something about it. In livestream, they even said they nerfed it because Colossus was attacking the enemy CV. Oh, yeah, well, okay, well, okay, fair enough. That's exactly what I expected, because Wargaming rarely actually nerfs these classes unless they're too effective against their own class. That, that's, that's the time when they tend to go, go like, whoa, 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 hold up, hold up, that's not okay. I'm not surprised at all. That, that was my first guess as well. That the problem was Colossus was shitting on enemy series, and war, if there's something Wargaming can't handle, it's series being sunk. We know carriers never targeted other carriers in World War II. It's true, it's true, it's true, it's true. Duncan. Duncan buff. Wait, Duncan main gun buff? Repair party reload increased. Okay, I don't feel, feel like Duncan was ever particularly powerful. Duncan was okay. It was really easy. It has a huge citadel. I don't feel like it needed this change at all. Duncan citadel, isn't Duncan citadel like, like the size of a small planet? Really? They, they thought this needed... That, wasn't it? Like, yeah, Jesus. That's the sit on the dunk. 
I remember this thing is the most fun to death strike ever. It blows up so easily. And it's got an overmatchable nose, so you can sit it through the nose really easily. What? What? Huh? Okay. Interesting. Oh, okay. are, they ner are they nerfing St. Vincent? Repair party consume all reload time increased. 80 to 100. Base detectability increased. I mean, this is not enough. This is not enough. 16.2 isn't, isn't going to be enough. And that he you rarely use St. Vini, St. Vini heal on cooldown. You rarely use St. Vini heal on cooldown. In fact, oftentimes you tend to hold on to the heal so you can get more out of it. Yeah, 13.1 can seal after the nerf. It's still insanely stealthy. And with that speed... Yeah, no, no. It, as long as they don't touch that bullshit armor that, that the St. Vinny has, that makes it so fucking impossible to see it. As long as they don't touch the, the shit, this, like, all this shit around it. As long as they don't touch all of this shit around it, there, there is no fucking way, like... Uh, you go from Duncan sit to this thing, and they think Duncan needs to be nerfed because they're nerfing this one. That's pretty funny. But yeah, no, this thing is still gonna be probably the best BB. This, this doesn't change, honestly, anything. Also, this comes after they, they, they gave that, they fucking added this dumb shit. Well, this is the wrong build. Don't look at this build. But this came after they added this shit, and this shit is absolutely god tier on St. Vinny. Absolutely fucking god tier. So you could, you, not only do you get an extra heal, something that was supposed to be limited on the St. Vinny, uh, you also get shorter cooldown on the heal with this. So, the, the, honestly, St. Vinny, bef the, they're trying to bring St. Vincent back to what it was before they did this small commander rework, and even then it was overpowered. So, this, honestly, this doesn't change much. You, you, you just build this now, absolutely build this now, and uh, it's, it's completely demented. No, this does it. This is such a small. This is such a small nerf. This is nowhere near enough to to shake. This is nowhere near enough to shake Saint Vinny. What the fuck is zero point eight percent? Uh, the cooldown of it. It stacks. It stacks basically. Uh, repair party cooldown down zero point eight. Per. Damage equal to hundred percent of your ship's base HP. And ships with low HP, like St. Vini, scale off this really quickly. So if you take 80k potential, you sh you get 0.8% cooldown reduction. 160, 1.6%, and so forth, and so forth. So if you get 800k uh, potential damage, you have shaved off 8% of your cooldown. And St. Vini is, because it takes so little damage usually, and because of the super heal, it can build up the cooldown very quickly. And now with the increased uh, delay, it means the percentage is even more effective. So this is even, an even better thing to build on St. Vincent now. St. Vincent armor is magical. Yeah, it really is. The Peter Bomber increased. What? So they removed one of the bombs from the, that absolutely Ebola AP dive bomb drop. But then they still think that it needs more torpedo damage. What? They couldn't just nerf it straight up? Why not? Am I missing something? Why couldn't they just nerf it straight up? Have they actually seen what it looks like when anyone semi-decent semi plays that thing? That's what I'm wondering. I don't get it. Malta is the definition of cancer. Yeah, it's it's awful. Mostly because uh, you can a you can be perfectly angled against it, but it, if RNG hates you, you still get fucked up. Now they removed some of that, but then they give this buff. This is a big buff. I don't understand why they can't just nerf them. Tactical attack aircraft. Hey, they're actually nerfing this thing. Finally. Not enough, of course. They're just nerfing the tactical squadrons. They're basically nerfing the consumable squadrons. It's a step in the right direction, but once again, this isn't going to be nearly enough. It's a step. I'm, I'm glad that they're doing it. I'm glad that they're doing it. But they really need to, like, step in and realize, hey, hey, yo, time to wake the fuck up, boys. Time to wake the fuck up. What, what is even eagle numbers? 
What are, what are people averaging in the Eagle? Let's see, what are the average numbers in the Eagle? Because like, the better players are averaging well over 200 and, uh, 200k in it. Jesus Christ. Yeah, no. I remember when these kinds of numbers were, were completely insane to get. Like, people breaking 400k was completely insane. But if you look at the leaderboards for Eagle, like... Top 11 has broken 400, or top 11 damage numbers in Eagle are over 400,000. One of them almost 500,000. I remember when that was like insane. Now it's like an Eagle thing. Eagle is completely demented. Actually, I'm curious about one thing. If I, what is Eagle average damage? 113 across even the potatoes. What is audacious? Audacious is 78. So you go from 78k average damage to 112. That's almost a 50% increase. Not quite. But it gets pretty close in terms of damage output. That's not a, once again, that's a problem I have with many of Wargaming super ships, especially the old ones, is they're not tier 10 to 11. They're always tier 10 to 13. Like, the leaps in, in damage are completely insane. Jaguar. Both. Wait, no, they nerfed the ring. What? What? No, that's a nerf. That's a big nerf. What the fuck? Who thought Jaguar was too strong? Really? Am I missing something? Is Jaguar overperforming? That's a bit that's a terrible change. 57 not torps are dreadful and less damage. Like having faster reload, who cares if you're not landing them? It's more important to land torps. This is gonna this is terrible. Is Jaguar like dominating some win rate things or something? No? Jaguar has one of the worst average damages of uh, tier 5s. Well, actually, it's kind of in the middle. It's 22k average damage. That's significantly less than many of, especially the premiums. Huh? Weird. Burn. Well, that's a good change. Burn is demented. Due to the ship showing excessive effectiveness when attacking destroyers, we decided to decrease its attacking potential against smaller targets. Okay. Nerfing burn, always good. I hope they nerf the Levin Heart as well. Cond. Main battle. What the fuck? Bonus to maximum main shield dispersion during the burst fire reduced. So wait, they. they what? 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 So, they take this from minus 40 dispersion to minus 20. So it's still a buff. Like, you're still getting 20% better dispersion. You're still getting 20% better dispersion. And they consider this change enough to justify changing the entire reload from 15 to 14. What? Are they aware? No overpowered Conde and like the, these Conde and Annapolis changes are complete fucking memes. They, they, these they have no idea what they're doing. They have no idea what they're doing. Why would they buff it? Why the fuck would they buff it? Even like this change, even with this change, Conde was still completely bonkers. Completely fucking bonkers. But they, they get what? How are they this demented? What? You are they aware that every time they allow super ships in fucking ranked or in, in clan battles, they always people always play Conde and Annapolis. Are they aware of this? Do they think it's a fucking coincidence? 
Are they wondering why perhaps we're not seeing a whole lot of fucking what's what's this super Hindenburg called? Claws of it. We're not seeing a whole lot of claws of it. We're not seeing a whole lot of Edgar. But my fucking god, every time we see a Condor or an Annapolis, every fucking game, have they perhaps wondered why that might be the case? Bro, Piemont, yeah, and that uh, the the Soviet one, Novosibirsk. You don't see any of them. You don't see any of those. It's always Conde and Annapolis. Those are the two. Have they perhaps wondered why that might be the case? Have they perhaps wondered why these two are, have such an overwhelming popularity above every other supercruiser when it comes to competitive? Bro. I really wish they played their own game. I really wish they listened to people who play their game. That would be even better. That, they didn't even need to play their own game. It's fine. You don't need to play it. But at least listen to the people that do. Because what the fuck, man. Jesus. Really? Really? <laughs> oh, my God. Nazario Saura. Okay. Wait, this is a nerf. Did they try to soften the nerf by doing this? This is a huge nerf. What? <laughs> well, okay. This is a huge... Was, was this like... Uh, it's actually not that big of a nerf. Yes, fuck it is. What the fuck is this? That's a nerf. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. Torpedo range, 8km. Less emergency boosts. And less... Wait, does someone think Avier is a... Why are they nerfing these things? Leone finally gets a buff. Probably not going to be enough to make it playable, but hey, at least a buff. Veneto, 1.8 Sigma, that's nice. 20 second rudder shift on... Eh, it gets a rudder shift buff and a Sigma buff. That's nice, I guess. It's still pretty oof to play it. Like the whole... A lot of the gimmicks of pushing in and tanking nose in, which like what the Roma and Roma was really known for, and Vittorio Veneto kind of excels at. That that shit is kind of terrible with CVs and subs in the game, but uh, eh, it's a step in the right direction. Lepanta, eh, also a nice buff. Sure, sure. Colombo. Oh, wait, they undid. I wonder if they undid this nerf. Because we called them out on it when they in announced the Sicilia. Remember when they announced the Sicilia and the Sicilia had all of these things and we called them out on it? I wonder if this is in response to that. They were like, oh shit, they have the receipts? I feel like this is in response to that. Because this was, this is undoing a nerf. Colombo used to have these values and then they nerfed it and then they announced the Sicilia and the Sicilia had the better stats. And now they're kind of like, oh, shit, we need to give it to Columba as well. I mean, a really good change, though. The firing angles, good change. Uh, and, of course, the Sigma, good change. The Cilia still looks far superior to this thing, but hey. Also, rudder shift. All of this is... All of this is good. Cecilia is straight up better still. Yeah, it is. I think they got sick of being called out. Might be. Dalian buff? Sure, Dalian isn't that good. Sun Yat-sen? Sure, that thing is trash. The AP actually being useful might be decent. Kunming 7.4 conceal. Mm, 7.4. Huh. Goes 6 cam conceal now. Really, was that bad earlier? I'm probably going to make it a lot more playable. Split. Buff. Katsun is buff. Quite a big one, actually. Did Katsonis need a buff? I remember playing it in ranked and I thought it was really good. I don't know if it was quite as good in randoms, but I thought Katsonis was pretty good. That's a pretty big buff as well. 4.4 to 3.8? That's like more than 10, what, 12% buff or something. That's a pretty big DPM buff. I'm surprised. I thought Katsonis was pretty good. Was it performing that poorly or something? Let me check Katsonis. Katsonis is performing terribly. What? Wait, how do the... Look at the damage the average player does in this thing. 
How are they doing less damage in the Katsuanis than in the Yuguma? Or in the Sin- It's a gunboat! What? To be fair, Black B is here, but... What? Okay, people have no idea how to play that ship. Uh, that's gonna be brutal for uh, against people who actually have any idea how to play this ship. Because Katsonis was already pretty damn good. Maybe they ran in and radared like idiots all the time or something? I don't get it. But like... Uh, I remember playing the Katsonis and thinking it was pretty nice. Katsonis already had... Sony's already had uh, this much DPM with really good arcs. And like, look at the, look at the flight time compared to everyone else. Look at the flight time on Katsonis. The guns were the guns are so nothing on it because they're 140s. It's like one of the best flight times of all. 7.3 second, and now it's gonna be like 12 percent. So over 108, it's gonna be almost Kitaka. It's gonna be above us between here. With radar, it's gonna be up here with radar and smoke and incredibly flat arcs. Jesus. You can't shoot all I can't sure, but it had that weird thing where you could no go nose in and use a lot of your guns. Like it was surprisingly good nose in, it had that weird thing. Where's Katsonis? Yeah, you could go nose in and you could shoot. Oh yeah, was it three guns? One of the... You could, if you're at the right angle, I think you could use all your guns. But yeah, no, I remember this thing being... It's hella fast. It's hella fast. 39? And you got speed boost? Yeah, it's super fast. Smoke... Radar. Gun mode. Wasn't the torps usable as well? Yeah, 9 came torps. 2x4. 8 in all torps. I remember this ship being pretty fucking good. And that's a big bot. I guess people who just don't know how to play it. And that's why they're buffing it. Numantia. Removed the increased shell dispersion debuff. Okay. Well, that was interesting. That was interesting. Some good change, so, like somewhere, like we thought this ship would be, but should be buffed or should be changed, but we don't really know what we're doing. Kaba was one of those. Like this should have fought the, the Kaba should have been. We're also changing rudder. We're also changing range or firing angles. Like they, they should have been a lot more here, but and they forgot about the Delny entirely. And uh, I don't know. I'm glad to see some nerfs. To, to CVs. That, I'm glad about that. But the super, super ship changes are completely demented. The super cruiser changes are completely demented. I would say the overall change, though, from this was pretty good deadlock. I would say pretty good deadlock overall. They nerfed generally a lot of CVs. They buffed generally ships that needed it. Not enough, like California, not enough. So a bit of word about some Indianapolis power creep in New Orleans. The super, the super cruiser changes were terrible. They have no idea what they're doing there. But buffing these trash ships and nerfing some broken ships, even if it's not enough of a nerf, it's not enough of a nerf, it's still... I would say baby steps, but baby steps in the right direction. 